Brady Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you here from Climber Stadium in Columbus Grove. Miles, we began uh, getting into uh, some of the nuts and bolts of the host Bulldogs. We said 11 and 1. Talk about some of their players. It's a pretty good team. It's looking to do some damage again here in the regular season. Yeah, everything starts with the linebacking core of this team, doesn't it? The physicality of this defense is going to be something to watch this year. A Lawson Mag on the outside. He'll be the defensive end that stops people from getting outside. He had five sacks a year ago, 58 tackles. A.J. Schaefer, the player of the year defensively in the league, 111 tackles. He is a contact magnet, but the big guy inside, number 50, Tag Cook, only 46 tackles away from breaking this school record. 141 hits a year ago. Those guys, they like to mash and bash. How about the, the offense for uh, this Pandora, or I'm sorry, this uh, Columbus Grove team. Take a look at uh, what's back in a really good quarterback that kind of direct the offense. Yeah, Brenton Renner, I think, has really matured from a year ago. One thing I liked when studying him is last year, he didn't turn the ball over a great deal. Now, they ran the ball about 70% of the time, so mm -hmm. they didn't ask him to do a whole lot in a throw game, but they're going to expand that this year, and I think he's up to the challenge watching him at practice this week. He throws a really nice uh, football. And you talked about Columbus Crow being able to run the football. They did a lot of that with their star running back, Colin Metzger. And uh, Grove's going to have to try to return 1,475 yards, 25 <laughs> touchdowns. Well, you can't replace the M train, can you? Metzger, that kid was a physical runner. Some might even call him the diesel, but he was a physical dude. But it's a little bit different run game now. Trenton Barraza, number three. I really like his quickness and explosiveness. I think you're going to see more of a, an outside scheme with him as opposed to running right at teams like they did with Metzger. And, of course, one other uh, big loss for Columbus Grove was in the special teams very good kinker punter, uh, Reese Verhoff, off to Marshall. And now we'll see what the Grove does there. Yeah, that's kind of a big one to replace, isn't it? One of the best kickers in the state of Ohio. They're getting ready for the kickoff. And one of the early season mistakes is guys were lining up on the wrong side of the field. A little yeah. eighth grade football flavor right it's there. It's officials, officials kind of confused as well. Well, Miles, well, we have just a couple of minutes here, but some keys to the game as we get set for this one. Absolutely. Let's start with uh, Pandora, Pandora Gilboa. Number one, stretch the edge. They're going to have to get the outside zone working because if they try to run inside against the linebacking core against this Columbus Grove team, it's going to be a long afternoon. So get to the edge. Number two, Lyman Dream, not a nightmare. What in the world are we talking about? Well, Carson Meyer used to be a lineman. How many linemen said, oh, my gosh, in my career, I became the quarterback. Make it a dream. Make his life easy, easy, quick throws. Protect him. Don't let him say this was a nightmare. I want to play quarterback again. And number seven is job number one, A.J. Schaefer for Columbus Grove. Wherever he goes offensively, you need to follow him. He's a great lead blocker. What well, about some keys for the homestanding Bulldogs of Columbus Grove? <laughs> number one is the easy one. Cover to kickoff. They haven't had to do it in about three years, right? All Reese Viroff used to do is just kick it in the end zone. So can you cover kickoffs? Number two, pick on cover one. Cover one is man coverage. Pandora Gilboa loves to run man coverage. Take advantage of it. See if you can beat him vertical on a, a nice little uh, rub route and try to get uh, wheel routes open against that number three, smash and mash. That's number seven, A.J. Schaefer, number 50, Tag Cook. Those two guys on the defensive side are linebackers extraordinaire. Coach Schaefer gave him high praise, said they might be two All-State linebackers on this team. Hey, the, the return of high school football means the return of the sports report. Season 18 starts this Friday night at 10 on WTLW. Join Patrick Gambler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around all season long, Fridays at 10 on WTLW. You're going to get a quick look at Elam Suter, number 17, the kicker for Pandora Gilboa. He's got himself a heck of a leg. Talking to him in pregame, Randy, he says he feels comfortable making it from about 45 yards. Coach Hershey said if they get to the 20, they'll give him a shot. He was the uh, special team player of the year in the conference last year. Said in practice, he can make him from 55. That's with nobody rushing against him. But getting set for Washington State and Ohio State, I'm sorry. I mean Columbus <laughs> Grove and Pandora Gilboa. Two great uniforms, though, aren't they? Rockets in the white with the, uh, we say cardinal or red. Home standing Bulldogs in the reds with the Ohio State inspired helmets. This is going to be Grove with a return. Nice play of the open field. Nice spin as uh, Shep Halker able to get out in the open space out across the 35 to about the 36. Forgive us if it'll be a little hard to see some uh, yardage markers. Early part of this one, Sun having a little bit of effect here early on. 
Well, it was almost disaster. Treated it like a grenade bouncing around at the goal line, but Halker showed some quickness, hit the seam, got it up to the 36. Pretty good starting position for the Bulldogs. So first and 10 out of the pistol formation. We'll see a man going in motion. That'll be Schaefer. Now they'll run the quick pitch coming to the far sideline out near the 40. A nice open field tackle made by Carson Meyer. We can see a lot of players playing both offense and defense in this one. Yeah, you see Schaefer, a physical guy indeed. Hooks Ethan Luganville, number 21 for Pandora Gilboa. Right away, allowed the Bulldogs to get positive yardage. I'll give him about four to get to the 40-yard line. Second and six here early on for Columbus Grove. Late handoff. This one again, trying to get to the outside. There's one of those speedsters, Trenton Barraza. Barraza down the sideline. It'll be a first down. First downs today brought to you by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick. See them for all of your commercial and residential concrete needs. Yeah, Barraza's a kid we, we highlighted in pregame with his quickness. Randy, all he did was press B-gap right there and then bounce it outside. Use his quickness to beat everybody in a silver helmet on the defensive side. Yeah, they'll run for 30 yards down to the Pandora Gilbo with 30. It's been two plays. And Grove already in the plus side here, just a minute into the contest. See that pistol formation now. Whistles and a little laundry on the field. That's one of the things that Coach Schaefer talked about. Wanted to avoid unforced errors. Now it's first and 15. To me, that's on the quarterback because he gets in the line of scrimmage after mm -hmm. a big play, snap it and go. Don't pause. Those big guys, they get excited after big runs. They want to go again right away. So referee John Weller with the call there. Randy Bergman, the umpire. Douglas Hoffman, the line judge, along with Tim Lehman and Doug Robinson, the back judge. First and 15 here for Columbus Grove, just underway. Scoreboard today brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Alley County for more than 100 years with offices in Lima and Bluffton. Quick play going to that near sideline, trying to get into the hands once again of Shep Hawker. Pandora says they have it. There's a mad scramble in the bottom of the pile. Coaches trying to get together, and the officials agree as we see the referee, John Weller, with the white hat is going to motion it to be Pandora Gilboa football. Well, how big was that false start now, right? The false start penalty takes them back to first and 15. So you're a play caller and Coach Schaefer thinks, well, let's go ahead and change what we're going to do. They're running right at them, getting yardage, get a little bit uh, side to side with the jet sweep. And all of a sudden the ball's on the ground. Now it's Hulker that put it on the ground. Pandora Gilboa with that at their own <laughs> 33. Our instant replays tonight made possible by Hawker Drywall and Blastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. First time with a football for the Rockets. They'll quickly get rid of it. We're going to see that a lot tonight. And just as quick as that defense from Columbus Grove as the ball got into the hands of one of the returning playmakers in Aiden Morris. Yeah, Coach Andy Coles, the defensive coordinator for Columbus Grove, was concerned about what they're going to do in the secondary as they graduated everybody in the secondary. But he's got to be excited on play number one, Mitch Ellerbrook. Number nine, do you see him knife right through that receiver, blow up that screen? That's the way to play physical corner. The minimal loss, they moved the down box from one side of the marker to the other. So we'll call it second and still 10. Speaking of 10s, number 10, Morris goes in motion. That's all window dressing as they run straight ahead, plowing for maybe a yard or two. Yeah, Mag's not going to get credit for the tackle for Columbus Grove, but he blows it up, gets in the backfield from his defensive end position, forces it back to his teammates, and they're kind of like sharks on chum right now, aren't they? Just diving in there, feeding frenzy. All red jerseys run to the football. So third and a long nine short ten as the down box moved back to the other side of the yard marker. So we'll call it third, still ten. Oh, Meyer dropping back under some pressure. A fire this way downfield has a man, and it's going to be broken up, nearly intercepted as Trenton Barraza. We saw an offense with a big play, Miles. Steps up then, knocks the ball away there. Yeah, he didn't play it perfectly, but he had the athletic ability to get the big paw up in the air and deflect it. But if you're Pandora Gilboa, you have to be a little bit comfortable with the fact that Carson Meyer does not look as if this game is a little too big for him. Had a quick little throw, through vertical right there, kind of settled down a little bit. Fourth down, and we'll see a punt coming here 
for the Rockets. Now Grove, Grove talked about coming after the punt if it's a tight protection. And you see both ends are in. Don't be surprised if Columbus, Columbus Grove comes up from the right-hand side. Yeah, Morris will punt, kind of overloaded. Bit of a wobbler, that one's gonna hit. At the 30, it will be fielded by Barraza, trying to get to the outside. And he's gonna get uh, nearly 10 yards on the return, close to the 40-yard line. Good starting field position again for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Barraza, I'm gonna tell you right now, as a sophomore, he is gonna be absolutely through the roof as a senior. He's gonna be a, a big play machine for this Columbus Grove offense. You see him in the open field, he's scary. 9.13 to go. The opening quarter on our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Still no score. So we kick off the season here from Climber Stadium in Columbus Grove. If you like high school football, you're going to love what we've got in store for you this weekend here on WOSN. Handoff once again, trying to find a little bit of running room. This time they go with Landon Schrader. Schrader, the six-foot senior, going to dance his way across the 40, pick up about two or three. Now got back to going right at that Gilboa defense, running between the tackles. Turn the ball over on the jet sweep. Be interesting to see if they come back to Hulker sometime soon on that. Let him know that you still have confidence in him carrying the football. And call it second and eight from the 41. This might be the most receivers we've seen in one set out of Columbus Grove. Low snap, trying to get the shotgun. I don't know if the center kind of hit his own leg there, Miles. That's what it looked like, kind of snapped it. And you wonder if it's slippery because, you know, it's a hot night. You're not used to having this type of enthusiasm, adrenaline running, ball just kind of snipped. Hey, what if it's a new play? He's going to snap it to himself, and he's going to run upfield. That'd be a center's Ooh, delight, wouldn't it? There we go. Nice crowd on hand tonight here at Climber Stadium, sitting on the visitor side. See the uh, home stands completely full miles. It looks like visitor side is as well. Last time we were here, second round of the playoffs, this place was hopping, trying to step up, nowhere to go. His runner is going to take off and run. He's going to be undercut at midfield, but that's going to be enough for a first down, a Dales Concrete first down for Columbus Grove at midfield. The runner had the under route open, Missed it though, used his feet to pick up the first down. Linebackers had dropped a little bit too far. Usually when you drop, you want to be able to see the quarterback, kind of the basketball principal, see ball and man. That time they left the ball out of their vision. Renner made him pay. It's Columbus Grove now set up right at midfield, right between the C and the G. Home of the Bulldogs. I was uh, told by the coach of this crew, which is not me, do not step on any of the letters. <laughs> Handoff is to the first man through, and Schaefer. Schaefer's going to be pushed back after he picks up a couple of yards. Yeah, it depends on what school you're at. Like They'll take exception if you step on the middle of the field on the paint job, and the grounds crew here did a fantastic job. That's Jared Zimmerly, Greg Griffith, and Mike Mormon. This field is in fantastic shape. Well, generous spot for Schaefer. It looked like he was pushed back after about three. He's marked well closer to the 45. They're going to give him almost five on that one. They'll give him a long four to the 46, but it looked like maybe an extra yard given there. It looks like they might be dialing up a little bit of pressure. It'll be the first time PG has blitzed tonight. A runner trying to get someone to jump in that tight eye. Once again, they go with Schaefer, able to run through the contact. He's going to be pushed back after getting across the 45. We saw, I believe, that was Braden Gert, uh, Gerding, number seven, kind of able to run in there late miles. A nice tackle. Anytime you can get Schaefer going backwards, that's a big deal, isn't it? Physical runner that he is, he's usually the one following forward. And give him about three to the 43. That was a big down for Tyler Clawson's defense. Third down and three coming up. Two receivers to the near side. They're playing off-man coverage. Handoff this time to the second man through. Fighting for knew he needed that extra yard. Just talk about awareness out of a veteran player, the sophomore Barraza. And it looks like Miles in that second effort, he's going to have himself a Dales Concrete first down. That's really good coaching because he used that free arm, Randy, to stay off the ground. And that gave him the second effort opportunity as he dove forward for it. For a sophomore, that's some impressive running. We'll mark him at the 39. Seventh play of the drive coming up here for the Bulldogs. 
Renner looking to throw once again under a little bit of pressure. Has to roll. He's going to throw a man open. Nice catch out to the sideline. We'll have a glare here. Might need a little bit of help to get a number. Believe that is Lawson Mag number eight that came up with that. Yeah, tight end Mag kind of drifted to the sideline as his quarterback used his feet to extend the play. Second time that the feet of Renner have made a big play for this Bulldog offense. Another Dale's Concrete first down, gain of 19. We're in the red zone at the 20 yard line. Looking to throw, comes to the near sideline. That one's going to be incomplete. Hit the hands of Barraza, but unable to hold on to it. That's a man beater that they worked on in practice on Monday. He's going to read the outside linebacker as he drops. If he stays inside, they're going to keep going outside with Barraza and hit him. If the linebacker drops too far, he's going to cut back inside. Play worked, just didn't execute it. Second and 10 now from the 20-yard line. Yeah, Renner is throwing the ball extremely well. Looks like a much different, confident quarterback early in this year. Yeah, being an offensive coach most of your life, you had to be super excited when he threw the receiver open. Ah, that's great, right? Again, they'll give it to that first man through, trying to uh, turning the big bruiser into a fullback as they go back to Schaefer. And he's going to march forward near another Dale's Concrete first down. Well, as a former left guard, that's one of your favorite plays ever. Inside trap, 20 trap. You're going to block the three technique tackle. It doesn't see you coming. You blow him up. Your fullback comes right up your rear end. Get some positive yards in third and short here. Third and just inside a yard. Ball's going to be spotted just inside, or should say outside the 10-yard line. They have the post open, no free safety in the middle of the field. Is Barraza trying to break to the outside. He's able to cut up field. He's going to have a first down as this drive continues. Another Dale's concrete first down. It'll be first and goal as they'll mark it down. As we try to look at where this is at, I want to say about the six-yard line. That is where they spot it. 11th play of the drive coming up here for Grove. Well, you're playing Barraza as this season progresses. Defenses are going to have to do a much better job of corralling the box. The, the outside force player is going to have to do a great job keeping his outside shoulder inside because he can get the B and then bounce the D gap in a hurry. First and goal from the six, that eye formation, that tight eye. They're going to go to the first man through it. Schaefer is going to lose his helmet. We got a flag coming in as well. All sorts of things going on here. Looked like he kind of slipped down early, then jumped back up and continued on. And we'll let the official sort this one out. So what's happening on that inside trap partner is he's just too close to it. And so Renner has to hand it off to him before the guard even gets there. And A.J. Schaefer is attacking. I think they're going to have, yeah, they're going to say his knee was down. But then the penalty is it because someone pulled his helmet off. Yeah, they're going to say it's on Pandora Gilboa. Schaefer's helmet came off. Now, will he have to leave the field for a play? And the official's kind of talking through this one. So it is going to be half the distance. So that'll move from the six to about the three-yard line. And they also have second down on the down box. So they're going to yeah, say that the play stands where, he fell, where he's kind of slipped down. And then are they saying the helmet was ripped off kind of after as a dead ball? Yeah, they, yeah, they are. And because of the penalty, Schaefer is allowed to stay on the field as they fix the helmet. They brought him back. You'll see him right there in the slot. The tight trips to the far side. Second and goal from the three. And they're going to go Barraza, who's able to get into the end zone and score the first touchdown of the year for the Bulldogs. Yeah, really good read by Renner. Held on to the football as long as possible. Didn't pull it on the quarterback keep. Gave it to the sophomore, who's got those sweet feet. Let him play that inside zone game for the touchdown. And this was an offensive lineman type of drive for Columbus Grove. They established themselves as a dominant inside run force tonight. Now, 10 plays, 61 yards. Took five minutes and four seconds off the clock. And now we will see, I believe that is Shep Halker on for the extra point. Kick is up, it's high enough, and it is good. 
Columbus Grove strikes first. Bulldogs with the early 7-0 lead. We'll take a break here on WOSN. Columbus Grove strikes first. Three-yard touchdown run by Trent Barraza makes it 7-0. On our scoreboard, our scoreboard tonight brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in Lima and Bluffton. Again, 10-play, 61-yard drive for Columbus Grove has given the Bulldogs 7-0 lead here late in our opening quarter. Well, let's see if Columbus Grove can actually cover a kickoff. It'll be interesting to see as they haven't really done it. You know, last year, their opponent started on the 20-yard line virtually mm -hmm. every drive and they averaged to get it on their own 40. So what a huge advantage field position is. So Halker sends this one end over end. This one will be fielded middle of the field. Good return. And it's going to be pretty good field position out of Pandora Gilboa as Harris able to bring that upfield. Yeah, about the 30-yard line. And if you're Coach Hershey for uh, the Rockets, you got to really get something going on this drive, right? You get the feeling if you go three and out right away, you turn that ball over to Columbus Grove again, it might be more of the same. This game will get out of hand in a hurry because the battle of physicality in this football game right now, it's been all one-sided, Columbus Grove. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Rockets is Sprunger Insurance. Look, the locations in Pandora and Bluffton, go Rockets. Lugabill trying to fight some running room here on first down, gets it to the outside, and he's going to be somersaulted down after a gain of about five, looks like he'll get to the 35. A pretty good job on the outside, getting the seal on that stretch zone run. That was Derek Mag. They got Lawson Mag for Columbus Grove sealed, but they kind of slow developing getting it or else it would have been a bigger play. So it was a three and out the first time up for Pandora Gilboa looking for their first Dales Concrete first down of the night and now we'll get a flag thrown by the far official now it's one of the things that every time we do a columbus grove game they're going to get called for offsides at least once or twice because they really press the line of scrimmage with their defensive line and it looks like that's the case here so the penalty move them to the 40 where it is a first down that is a dale's concrete first down for Pando pandora gilboa called dale's concrete and decorative stamping and lipstick for all of your commercial and residential concrete needs. Shotgun formation, three receivers, they'll run out of this. And that uh, Columbus Grove defense, Miles, right there as they meet Andrew Miller. Yeah, Mr. Cook, he delivers again. He cooks up a nice tackle at the line of scrimmage. He is playing about six yards over top to center. And this Pandora Gilboa offensive line has yet to reach him. He is a physical player. All he's doing is using his eyes to see where the ball's going and then running downhill and mashing people as he gets there. Officials need a little bit of help spotting the football. This is going to be a loss of about half a yard. Call it second and 11 for the Rockets from their own 39. Quick snap. This one kind of dumped off, and that one looked like it left the hand a little funny of Carson Meyer kind of pointing at his target. Wanted a little bit of help, but... None coming here for PG. It was going to be a little slip screen. They're going to drop the linebacker right behind the offensive line, let the defensive line rush, but it, the rush got there so quick, Meyer had nothing to do but throw it into the ground. Very fortunate he didn't hold on to it and try to throw it late. Would have been intercepted. Third down coming up here for the Rockets. Ball still at their own 39-yard line. Shotgun formation with four receivers. Meyer under pressure, sets up the screen. He's got a man in Morris. And Morris able to get some yardage to the 45. Give him about six, but it's going to bring up a fourth down. What do you do here? Oh, you, you punt the football because you don't have a play right now you feel comfortable with making fourth and six. You ran jailbreak break screen right there, but... Good Lord, did you see Tag Cook just blow up the blockers and make the tackle? On fourth and five, Rockets will line up to punt. Columbus Grove will send Barraza with the touchdown back deep. He stands at about his own 25, continues to backpedal. And kick it away from Barraza. 
Looks like Pandora Gilboa is going to let this run all the way down if they can. Tough to see the numbers that are actually on the play. Actually, not sure the play clocks are even in operation tonight. This is the one to our left is not working. Now getting help from the back touch. High end over end punt. Good punt. Braz is going to struggle with this one. And he's able to get to the outside. Thought there's a flag on the play, but I believe the official just threw his uh, marker down. Yeah, Derek Mag, number 24. Fantastic job. You're the outside gunner. You keep the returner inside. Keeps Braz inside and then makes the tackle. Getting some pats on the helmet from his teammates on the sideline. He deserves it. That is a fantastic special team play. So minute 37 to go on our web insurance scoreboard. 7-0 Grove with the football. They'll have it at their own, looks like 20 yard line. Tyler Kloss, the defensive coordinator for the Rockets, adjusting his front now. Shading over to the strong side. And Grove trying to send some fresh bodies in. A nice play on the defensive end made by Carson Meyer, knocking that pass away from Lawson Mag. Now one-on-one -on -one against the tight end. Eight versus eight. Mag had the seven route towards the sideline. Really good throw, good route. Just a better play by the quarterback. Turned into a corner, Carson Meyer. And our instant replays again tonight made possible by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Good design, though, by Columbus Grove, right? Go over low to side, go back one-on-one. -on -one. You know it's man coverage with no safety help to that side. Force a corner and make a play one-on-one. -on -one. That time, he did. See Grove in a shotgun looking to throw middle of the field. That one's going to be incomplete. Trying to thread the needle inside to Braza. That's going to bring up a third and ten. Now, it's a play that they ran earlier in this game where Braza has the option of either going to the flat or arrowing back to the middle. That time, just to throw a little too close to the ground where Braza couldn't corral it. See Pandora Gilboa trying to rotate some fresh bodies in on the defensive line. Boy, third and 10. Huge play here for the Rockets. Pandora Gilboa has got to get off the field here. See a man going in motion out of the shotgun. Renner rolls. He's going to throw back. Has a man open in Mag. Mag's going to get a late block to the cut up field. Got a first down and more down the sideline. Into Pandora. Gilboa territory. He's going to cut up. Gets a block by Zach Reynolds on his way to the end zone. We've got a touchdown with a late flag coming in. Unfortunately, it looks like it's going to be a big game, but not the touchdown. I think they're going to get the block in the back at about the 10 yard line. I'm going to walk this one back, but what a great play design, partner. Coach Schaefer put this tight end throwback screen in on Monday. Man coverage, run the motion across, one-on-one. -on -one. Have your tight end drop back, throw it to him, and your offensive line, Ted Cook, tremendous block to spring mag. Big gainer on third and ten. Might turn this game hugely into their favor. And it is a penalty on Columbus Grove, but as Miles said, it did come late, so most of the run in the catch and run will count. The sad thing is Mag even saw, right? He's crossing the goal and puts his hand on his helmet like, oh, it's not gonna count. It will be a Dale's concrete first down as this ball does get backed up. Well, good news is it's a huge play. Bad news is the touchdown negated. Ball will be spotted. Looks like the Pandora Gilboa 21. They might have to wait the chains a little late in making an appearance. The chain gang also kind of held up waiting to see how where the ball would go in the penalty. Well, you know, they, they don't have preseason for the chain gang. So this is the first time they've been out. Uh, they do some down in distance and some <laughs> scrimmages. <laughs> Got one on one to the top side. Run, bounce to the outside. This time it'll be Schrader. Landed Schrader trying to get upfield, and he's going to have a big gain. And it looks like another Dale's concrete first down for Columbus Grove. Yeah, Kyle Lathrop, the left guard, pulled and had a real creative block on the outside. Some might say it might be a hold, but he got it done. Officials let it go, and that was able to spring the big run. 
17-yard gain will bring up a first and goal from the four. Yeah, as a former lineman, there are no such things as holds, so I thought it was a creative block. Nice job, Mr. Latham. Grove trying to strike once again here late in our opening quarter. Already 7-0 in our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Well, trying to move forward. Good job holding there by Pandora Gilboa. Yeah, Blank Mitchell. Mitchell Blank came free. Number 55 denied the touchdown. It was a power formation all the way. Did you see all the beef in front of Renner? No doubt about the old team. Tim Tebow quarterback lead. Pandora Gilboa up to the task on that one. Second and goal from the two. See Columbus Grove tries to get one more play in before the quarter comes to an end. Runner under center, does get the snap, hands to the first man through, and it looks like a touchdown we see from one of the officials. See who to give credit to, and see who got the ball there early on. AJ Schaefer, number seven. You can't go wrong giving it to the big fella. Let him rumble in, dive into the end zone. A.J. Shaver with a two-yard touchdown run. They'll make it 13-0, the extra point coming for Columbus Grove, who's trying again to extend this win streak to three in a row. 32-18 in 2019, 31-6 a year ago. Snapped a two-game win streak by the Rockets as Halker will knock the extra point through. So early lead. For Columbus Grove, they strike again late in our opening quarter. We'll step aside here on WOSF. Eleven seconds left to go in our opening quarter. Now 14-0 in our Web Insurance Agency scoreboards. Columbus Grove gets the two-yard touchdown run by A.J. Schaefer. Six-play, 80-yard drive. Took just a minute, 26 off the clock. Miles started with that big play on the screen. Grove able to punch it in from there. Yeah, third and 10 is the first time behind the sticks on a third down long yardage. Pandora Gilboa had him exactly where they wanted, but great design on the tight end, that throwback screen, a little half roll. That yeah, was the big play. Turned that whole drive in favor for Columbus Grove. Shep Hulker again will do the kicking here. Has the ball teed up at the 40, sends this one end over end. This one will be fielded by Harris, trying to get to that near sideline. And he's going to get out to about the 20. Pretty good kick there. Yeah, one of the things Columbus Grove does that's so smart special teams-wise, did you see all the small numbers on kickoff? All small numbers are usually fast guys, right? So put your fast guys out on kickoff, let them cover, they run down, make the tackle. Is that how that works? Small numbers are usually fast guys, yeah. Big numbers, these are slower. Wouldn't you just love to see like a tackle wear number seven? <laughs> just stretch that number You see as that much on defense in the NFL now, it kind of shocks the mind. First to 10 for the Rockets from the 20 yard line, handoff on first down, they'll go to Ethan Luganbill. Luganbill, not a whole lot of running room as that swarming defense from Columbus Grove will swallow him up. As Dylan Bryan who knifed through the center guard hole Made the play in the backfield. Last play of this first quarter. And it's been dominant for Columbus Grove. So loss, looks like loss of a yard or two. They might mark that back to the 19. Second and 11 coming up here. And it will come in the second quarter. So we've reached the end of the opening quarter. All Grove here early on as we'll take a break on WOSN. They see number 76, Connor Douglas, also in the game for Columbus Grove. He was in on that last play as well. Here comes a backer blitz by Cuck. Second, we'll call it 12 here. Completion out to the uh, home sideline. It's coming back into the field of play as Colin Harris will make the grab. It's going to set up a third down. A nice throw by Carson Meyer on time. Makes it back to a workable third down. You remember a year ago, partner, we were at that playoff game against Liberty Center, and Connor Douglas, as a sophomore, came in and did some really good work defensively trying to take away the inside trap of Liberty Center. It's good to see him getting some more playing time now. Third and about three coming up here for Pandora Gilboa, looking for a Dales Concrete first down. And we see trips near that uh, 
Visitor's sideline. Meyer looking that way as they all fan out. This one's going to be intercepted. Pass is picked off and it's going to be taken back for a pick six. Big play defensively. Landon Schrader with the INT. Yeah, well, Schrader's the guy, the third linebacker, people don't talk about because Schaefer and Cook are so good, but he's the quickest of the three. He plays that flat really well, as you see right there, kind of jumps the little now route inside curl, picks it off. Meyer probably shouldn't throw it. Not sure what he was reading, but they're reading nothing but six points for Columbus Grove. Now 20 to nothing is a special teams unit. It's going to scramble to get onto the field for the Bulldogs. It's going to be tough to find a school in Northwest Ohio that has a better three linebacker core than this Columbus Grove team. Shep Halker on for the extra point. Low snap, but it is put down. Nice job by the holder. Let's give Schrader. Schrader scores the TD, and then he's going to do the holding on the extra point. And a nice job scooping that one up. Well, no problem. He had the great hands for the interception. I got great hands. I'll just grab the snap, put it down on the ground. Extra point adds one more point for the Bulldogs. Now 21 off that early on in the second quarter. We'll take a break here at WOSN. Twenty, uh, 20 to nothing, excuse me. Apparently that extra point was missed. I thought he made that, Miles. Well, it was tough to see. The sun is really bright in our faces here on the visitor's press box. It is tough to see. Like, you can't even see the numbers where we're at. So we'll, we'll let you slide on that one, partner. It's okay. Mm. 20 to nothing. There, there's no, by the way, no preseason for announcers. I wasn't sitting at home with games on TV <laughs> announcing alongside. 20 to nothing in our web insurance agency scoreboard. Scoreboard tonight brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in Lima and Bluffton. Our instant replays tonight also brought to you by Halker Drywall and Plastering. Visit halkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. And, and if I can fit in one more sponsor plug, touchdown done without a Dales Concrete first down as this kickoff heads it into the end zone. Hey, and saying Reese Bierhoff, who? Chef Halker, super toes it into the end zone. They're used to seeing that here in Columbus Grove, and he delivers in a big way. It's Pandora Gilboa takes over at their own 20 here. Inside of a minute gone by, second quarter. Rockets find themselves in a big hole, down 21 to nothing. Expected to have a pretty good season in the Blanchard Valley Conference. Had a good talk with a defensive coordinator Tyler Clausen. Clausen, a friend of mine, former head basketball coach at uh, my neck of the woods, our neck of the woods, I should say, out in Holgate. Mm. I'll tell you what, partners, an old defensive coordinator, Andy Coles, the defensive coordinator here for Columbus Grove, he's got to be excited to see that play. Why? Because it was a tackle for loss right at the line of scrimmage. But where were all the red jerseys at? He had 11 red jerseys at the football at the end of that snap. That's running to the football. That is defensive football at its finest right there. Well, loss of about one is going to bring up second 11 as they back up to the 19 takes no athletic ability to run. Your pit oh, it feet. takes athletic ability to run. To run to the football. There's a rollout. Good looking pass. That one's going to be fired as catch is made by Colin Harris. Good throw in the money by Meyer. And that is going to be Dale's concrete first down for the Rockets. Yeah, Meyer seems more comfortable on the move throwing the football. That's a heck of a throw going to his left, going back to the middle of the field. Colin Harris, 38 catches a year ago. He is a threat on the outside. Gain of 16 when they needed 11. See Schaefer kind of leaning up. Meyer's going to get rid of this one. Another man open. Did he get the foot in? The official work in our sideline says he will. A nice catch made by Aiden Morris. Yeah, great pickup, though. The Schaefer came on a blitz, and it was picked up by Luganbill. Allowed his quarterback, Meyer, to hit the seven route for another first down. And finally, Pandora Gilboa's got a little offense cooking. That's 20 yards following the 16-yard completion. That's back-to-back. -back. Dale's concrete first downs for the Rockets of Pandora Gilboa. Yeah, picked on Antonio Gray, number 13 for Columbus Grove that time. One of the new corners in this defense. It's quick pitch going out to Luganville. Luganville trying to run over people. He's going to pick up a couple of yards. 
Yeah, you get the feeling if Pandora Gilbo is going to get any yardage on the ground at all, it's got to be outside the tackle box. They tried to run at this Columbus Grove defense, and those linebackers just suffocate you. So they'll gain three, nearly four. They will call it four. Let's see if they can keep stretching the edge. They come and score here, partner. They get a little confidence, might make it a football game. Second, we'll call it about six, the ball near the Columbus Grove 41. Now looks like a little shift to the offense. Meyer going to roll out, trying to once again throw man open. We saw him do this earlier. Andrew Miller, the intended target, just kind of overthrew him a little bit with the pressure. Yeah, Miller wide open, but Mag came screaming from his defensive end position. And number eight got in the face of number eight, forced a quick throw. You know, Lawson Mag, guy that had five sacks a year ago for Columbus Grove, and you see why. He's got that suddenness on his get off from that defensive end position. Third and six coming up here. The Wren Wiffle Ball tradition continues. Tune in Monday night, 8 o'clock, to WOSN for the pageantry and spectacle that is Wren Wiffle Ball. The biggest little game on earth, only on WOSN Monday at 8. Yeah, you played some wiffle ball growing up, right? Absolutely what, have. What'd you guys use as a strike zone? We used the old folding uh, ribbon chair. Remember the old lawn chair? We used, that is a good question. Here's a throw middle of the field. How about going up getting that one? As Ethan Luganbill is going to come down with that. It's a first down for the Rockets. Yeah, best drive of the day for Pandora Gilboa. Luganbill shows his athletic ability, out jumps Schrader to get the catch. Now the first down for Pandora Gilboa. A little seam route right there for vertical principle. Big conversion. It's a Dales Concrete and Decorative stamping first down. Let's look at that at the 22. A big pickup at 19 yards. Now that's going to bother me on what we used for the strike zone now. I can't remember. <laughs> you probably had a ghost runner at catcher. We did. Well, we had the ghost runner. A nice cut that time Actually, by Luganbill. Had a big pickup, a big catch. Now a little dipsy do back to the backside A to get positive yardage. So we took a trash can and tipped it on its side. So like the, the opening was on the... Yeah. And if you if it went in the trash can, it was a strike if you didn't swing at it. Okay. All right. You had a low strike zone. You did. Timeout on the field. I believe it's Columbus Grove that calls timeout as the first time Pandora Gilboa has moved the ball extensively against them. Andy Coles wants to settle his defense down. It's 20, 20 to nothing. Keep wanting to say 21. 20 to nothing on our web insurance agency scoreboard. That's all that blackjack you played in your life, yeah, I'm used it? to 21, 21, that's right. Yeah. 20 doesn't do you any good, you need 21. <laughs> Dealer always comes up with 21 when you have 20. It's weird. weirdest thing. Oh, oddest combination to get there. It's odd. Three, three twos, a seven. <laughs> yeah. It's just, anyway, tonight's premier sponsor for the Rockets is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton, and they say, go Rockets. Got to come away with some points right here. Even if you kick the field goal, you got the capable kicker and suitor. Got to come up with something. This is your best drive of the day, right? Don't want to come away empty. Get something where you can build off of for the rest of this football game. Hey, look at Pandora Gilboa, their drive charts. Three plays and a punt. Four plays and a punt. And a pick six on your... Third play, so this being the eighth play of this drive, by far, Miles, most productive of the night, starting back in their own 20-yard line, now inside the red zone at the 19 of Columbus Grove. Well, they finally got their outside receivers involved. Got an opportunity at a fade up high if they want it. That's going to be a throw. Yeah, they're going to go with the receiver. This one's going to be intercepted. What an athletic play in the end zone to take that one away. Miles, that looked like a completely open receiver. And hey, what a pick. You can see it all the way. It's going to be the halfback pass off of Jet. And then Shep Halker comes out of nowhere. That's a huge play for number 20. Remember, he had the fumble earlier in the game for Columbus Grove. But it looks like it's going to be a touchdown for Pandora Gilboa. But Halker comes screaming out of nowhere to steal it and deny it. Oh, what a tough break. Would have been the best drive. Still is the best drive of the night for Grove. That was there. Just the throw was a little too looping. A little bit more of a liner throw. It's going to be a touchdown for Pandora Gilboa. So 
First and 10 from the 20s. The officials say the ends or the interception happened in the end zone. Runner on first down is going to take off and run. He's going to take one big hit, and he's going to stay on his feet for a couple more yards. Yeah, so Renner sees the linebackers. They vacate, right? And one of the things that they do at Pandora Gilboa is they teach the linebackers to turn and run. So now it makes it empty middle of the field. Plus, they don't see the quarterback take off. That's free yardage. Third time already that Renner's taking advantage of that. Gain of five on the scramble is going to bring up second and five from the 25-yard line under eight minutes to go. Opening half on a web insurance agency scoreboard. You see three receivers coming to our side of the field. Widen out, Miller. Widen out. They are way off the inside slot. They have the bubble screen if they want it. Renner looked like it was going to be a late give. He's going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Do have a flag coming in from, uh, I believe that was the, the back judge that came in. And Noah Burke hold a number five from his defensive end possession position. Made that play for the Rockets defensively. And they're going to say there was a penalty against Columbus Grove. Coach Hershey saying, no, we don't want to take the penalty. Let's make it third down, see if we can get the football back. And one official began the uh, walk-off and then see another one. You nope, know, nope, 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 nope. They're going to decline that. So now we make sure they get the spot correct. It was a snap that kind of put Renner in a bad spot, a little off to the left-hand side. Kalen Mays, the center, number 52, has been steady all night long. That time, just a little bit off to the left. Did have the one snap into his leg early in the game as well. So there's a loss of two on the play. It's going to bring up a third and seven. And the officials are going to have a meeting and talk about this one. They're going to make sure the ball is lined up with where they have the down box as everyone kind of looks over. Got to like it. They picked it up and moved it like six inches. Now we're ready to go. Third and long pistol formation here. You have twins of this side, so be ready for a wheel route. Renner throws it, and it's going to be incomplete trying to hit Barraza and leaking out to that home sideline. Yeah, played extremely well by the linebacker on that side, Ethan Luganbill. He just kind of held tight, let things come to him, and he run in the wheel with the running back to the short side. Makes it tough. He runs out of territory in a quick manner. So fourth down for the first time tonight. We'll see the punt unit for Columbus Grove make its way onto the field. It's A.J. Schaefer will do the punting. I don't see anybody back. One's going to go through the hands track. That is Mitchell Ellerbrock. Ellerbrock trying to get this one out of the end zone. He's going to be brought down. And Pandora Gilboa is on the scoreboard with a safety. Yeah, bad snap. And we're going to get a late penalty as well. After the play, some extracurriculars taking place on the sideline. I thought maybe he was going to try it and boot it when he was rolling out to the right. Had an opportunity, but decided to keep it. Really fortunate that it's just going to be a safety. You can dance if you want to. You can leave yourself behind because it's the safety dance for Pandora Gilboa. I feel like I'm obligated. The greatest songs of the 80s. So 20 to 2 on our web insurance scoreboard. Hey, you load the bases, hit a home run here. It's a new game. Not very often you start your season off, partner, with your first score being a safety. But it shows you how important it was to get that third down stop. Forces the punt and bad snap happens, and all of a sudden, you're Pandora Gilboa. You're looking, you're going to get good field position. Could get back in this game, score a touchdown. Now you're going to get the ball back here on the free kick, so... Yeah, officials are talking to the coaches, trying to explain what happened afterwards. While they have the conversation, we'll take a quick break here. Free kick coming up on WOSN. Miles looks like everyone's all set here again. A safety off the punt attempt for Columbus Grove has uh, led to a couple of points. For Pandora Gilboa, the free kick coming up here, and the Rockets could get back into this one halfway through the second quarter. 
Yeah, Mitch Ellenbrock going over to the sideline. They were going to punt the ball, but it looks now they're going to put Shep Hulker out and kick the ball. You do have the choice. You can either punt it or you can kick it off the block when it's a safety, but you are kicking from your 20. But because of the penalty, they're kicking from their 10. So whatever the penalty was, they're going to say Columbus Grove, they shouldn't have done it. It's going to cost them 10 more yards. Shep Hulker has the ball teed up. What a weird turn of events in the last couple minutes here. Rockets trying to get back into this one. Hawker, a bit of a knuckler. This one hits just inside Pandora Gilboa territory, but a good return as the uh, Grove Special Teams Unit maybe stepped slow downfield. Had a long way to cover as well. Led to a lot of open space, and the Rockets are going to start inside. Pandora Gilboa territory. A great open field tackle by number five, Zane Steschulte on special team for Columbus Grove. But as you just highlighted, great starting position here for Pandora Gilboa on the 45. Always like to take a shot after you have momentum change like this. You're on the positive side. See if your quarterback can hit one vertically. You got two threats on the outside. Take a shot. It's Pandora at the Grove. 45 will send three receivers. With an H back. Oh, hand. Here's Luganbill waiting for his blockers to form. Still on his feet as he slips out of one tackle. Still moving forward. Still able to go. And he's fighting down the sideline and will finally get pushed out of bounds, but not after. It's a Dale's concrete and decorative stamping. First down. Easily the biggest, best run of the day for Pandora Gilboa. Luganbill, 843 yards a year ago. None tougher than that one right there. The senior leading the way for the Rockets. He'll pick up, and it looks like he's going to be a little slow coming off the field. Might have lost the helmet. And a little back and forth there. Yeah, did you see who ran all the way over to the sideline to help make the tackle for the, the defense there? Connor Douglas, number 76, the big fella, rambling over. That's running to the football. It's a gain of 22 on the run. And it's a first and 10 from the 23. Yeah, I think the Rockets are looking to call a timeout because they're not happy with how things are setting up here. Trying to get set. Yeah, Coach Hershey over by the sideline official that does get the timeout. It's timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. Pandora Gilboa trying to get back into this one, down 20 to 2, but driving. Twenty to two, Columbus Grove with the lead over Pandora Gilbo. The Rockets driving. Big first down on the run there by Luganville has them set up. First and ten. They have one on one down here with Colin Harris. If they want it, take a shot against Antonio Gray. Quick pass out to Morris, trying to make something happen. He's going to move forward. He'll get near the 20-yard line. Yeah, tried to run the inside bubble, get the tackle out there to get the block, but you're trying to reach Landon Schrader, one of the quickest defenders on that defense, and he just makes the play in open space. No problem for Schrader. He'll mark it the 21, gain a two, bring up a second and eight. A Luganville out of the game right now for Pandora Gilboa. See four receivers this time. Meyer going to look at everything over, looks downfield, goes to that sideline, and he's going to throw in between two receivers. He had one kind of going downfield, one kind of cut up, and he kind of threw it in between the two. Now, kind of an old stool route inside receiver. He runs the out, and outside receiver kind of pivots after about 10 yards. But it was tough to throw over the outstretched hand. Number eight, Lawson Mag. Even when he doesn't make the play, he affects the play. Lawson Mag has hit himself a heck of a first half defensively. So bring up a third and eight. Meyer, low snap, able to take off, and looks like he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That's yeah, Kyle Lathrop that's going to come through and make the tackle for loss or sack. The low snap really was a problem, affected the whole play. 
Nothing to do, but Carson Meyer try to hold on to it and get some positive yardage. Now, all of a sudden, partner, fourth and seven, what do you do? If you're Coach Hershey, do you go for it here? I think you have to. You got a kicker that can nail it through the uprights. They're going to go, or at least they're going to appear to go. Watch the long count. Try to get a draw off, get some free yards. Fourth down coming up here for the Rockets. They'll send four receivers. Yeah, it does look like they might be trying to draw Columbus Grove. Looking over the sideline, see if they're going to change things. There's going to be the timeout. It's a timeout taken, as uh, Miles said. I'll give you, uh, us the opportunity to tell you again that our uh, first downs tonight brought to you by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick. See them for all of your commercial and residential concrete needs. So fourth down, 20 to 2 on our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Is there a big difference? If you go for the field goal here, Miles, My big difference, 20 to 2, 20 to 5? Well, sure, because uh, you got the touch, two touchdowns and a two-point conversion will tie it back up right at five points. But one of the things that you'd be aware of is Elam Suter is down here on the sideline getting his right leg stretched out. Don't know if he's 100% ready to go to kick it. And sometimes you call timeout because as a play caller, you don't really know what you want to run on fourth and seven. So you call the timeout, you talk to the guys on the headset, you look at your play sheet and say, oh, I forgot about this one. This is the one we're going to go with. But in these situations, if you're going to throw the football, go to one of your best receivers. Don't throw it to a third or fourth option. Let a guy make a play. Catch an exclusive broadcast of the Allen County Fair Band Show on WOSN Tuesday night at 8 or Saturday, August 27th at 10 on WTLW. So fourth down, and the decision is to go for it. Meyer looking to throw middle of the field. That one's going to be caught. And making sure it gets into the bread basket is Aiden Morris. Big completion and a big Dale's Concrete first down for the Rockets. Yeah, saw the cover too high shell. So just run the post, knowing that the inside linebacker, Cook, who's really good, but can't get there in time. Great timing route, throw it to one of the best receivers in the area, Aiden Morris. Huge catch for the Rockets. Big gain of 16, sets up a first and goal from the five. Rockets trying to make this entertaining, and now it's possible Columbus Grove might have given the Rockets a couple more yards here. They're going to get Kalen Mays. Kylan Mays going to get a little too eager. I mean, you're not too upset if you're Columbus Grove because what are you losing? A yard and a half there? Moves it a little bit closer to the goal line. So with the penalty, that's going to get moved to about the three. Connor Douglas back in to get a little bit bigger for Columbus Grove. Luganbill trying to find a little bit of running room. Nowhere to go there. He's going to be swarmed under. It's going to be second and goal. Well, how big was that throw for Carson Meyer, though? To convert fourth and seven. First time ever starting at quarterback. Your team's down big. You throw a, a line drive to your inside post receiver to convert it. I bet there was a huge sigh of relief after he threw that football. Every lineman's dream, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It's going to be a Disney movie. Second goal from the two. Meyer, quick handoff again, going to Lugaville, trying to fight inside. No! And see the official on the visitor's no! side coming in saying he's short. Be third down is Andrew Miller. Not taking thought, over here. I thought Miller had gotten in across, but they're going to say he was down before the ball crossed the goal line. Boy, running inside against this Columbus Grove defense is not easy. Third and goal from the one, maybe just inside it. See what the Rockets elect to do here. Uh, so they got Meyer out right. So two backs in the backfield. Luganville lined up at quarterback. He's going to get the call, trying to fight his way in. He's working his way, a little hop and a skip and a jump, and he's in for the touchdown. Now, Ethan Luganville, who had a huge run to start this drive on the right sideline, he says, Coach, what are we doing? Just direct snap it to me. I'm a physical runner. I'll get you that touchdown. And there's new life to this football game for Pandora Gilboa now. Makes it 20-8. to eight. Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. As Elam Suter will come on to attempt the extra point. As the kick is up, 
and the extra point is good. Heck of a hole by Dylan Fenbert, who I'm gonna say is the biggest PAT holder in Northwest Ohio, but he's a good one. Great job, Fenbert. Eight play scoring drive, gets a touchdown for the Rockets, 20 to nine. We'll take a break here at WOSF. Twenty to nine on our scoreboard now. Brought to you by the Web Insurance Agency. Is Ethan Lugabill with a one-yard touchdown run for Pandora Gilboa? Caps off an eight-play, forty-five-yard drive. Took about three and a half minutes off the clock. But partner, twenty to nine, defensive stop here in a brand new ball game. You got to give a lot of credit. A squib kick. That's gonna be a live ball as that was touched. Finally jumping on top of it was Landon Schrader. It'll be good field position for the Bulldogs, but uh, could have no. been disastrous there. It, oh, two things. You got to give a lot of credit to Pandora Gilboa, right? Fighting and not giving up in this game. Now it's a football game. Second thing right there, I wondered what they were going to do here because one of their coaches ran down to the corner of the field and waved towards the kicker, Suter, and said, hey, you know, hey, squib it over here. So if you're playing Pandora Gilboa, just watch the coach where he lines up. They're trying to find that open spot, chase it down, maybe get another possession. Columbus Grove will have it now with their own 31-yard line. Here's a quick pitch going to that sideline, going right back to Barraza. Barraza able to fight for a little bit of yardage. Now nah, see a yellow hanky on the ground behind the play. Usually that's going to be a hold. Oh, there it is. I'm glad you saw it. I could not see it. Well, you know, as a former lineman, it's always seared in the back of your head. After every run, did they catch me for holding? So hold will bring this one back, so it negates the gain. The free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in the app or Android Play Store. Also, visit our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more, WOSN.TV. But a big run here. One hole that's not going to matter. Off to the races is Braza, looking for his second touchdown of the night, and I believe he's going to get it as he gets into the end zone. Ooh, talk about electric feet. Watch young man, Mr. Barraza in the hole. He is corralled, but he gives a little slide, slide, slippity slide, and then gets vertical. Nobody's gonna catch that young man. He's a bad dude. Wow, the game has changed in a hurry. It's Trenton Barraza adds after a three yard touchdown run to start the scoring, about one from 84 yards. And just like that, momentum back over to the Bulldogs. You got guys like that in the backfield as a play caller. Anything you call could make you look smart because he's an explosive runner. Just knifed right through the heart of that rocket defense. And here we are concerned in the pregame about who is going to handle the rock on this running game for Grove as the extra point by Hawker is up and good. Oh, if you're Pandora Gilboa, you got to be scratching your head. You had everything in front of you now after... Digging out of that giant hole, and he just give it all back right there on that great run by Barraza. Well, the scoring drive easy on that one. One play, technically 69 yards as the drive did start in 31 after the penalty. So 69-yard scoring drive, but you're going to get credit for the 84-yard touchdown run. Yeah, first and 20 after the penalty. You're licking your chops if you're the defense, and oh, we're going to get off the field, get another touchdown right before half. Steal this game when we're down 20 nothing, But no, Barraza, he is a game changer. You know, it's TB, his initials, Trenton Barraza. He might as well change it to TD, though, because he's going to score a ton of touchdowns here at Columbus Grove. And second of the night so far, 27-9, our web insurance scoreboard. We talked about it at the start of our telecast. Tons of action for you. Here on uh, WOSN, WTLW, if you're watching the replay, uh, first one at about 4.30. Uh, don't be shocked if you hear and or see Miles and I again. Yeah. As, uh, 
Got a big one, don't we, to my how about, right? How about we're our own lead-in for live <laughs> football in WOSN? The River Rock, Napoleon Defiance meeting for the 100th time. As high end over end kick. This one fielded inside the 10. He's trying to get to the outside. Will be Morris, and he's going to be brought down near the 20 yard line. And Miles, it is officially can see most of the field part mm. of the evening. The best time of the night, early season, when that sun gets behind the stands, and we can see the whole field. But you know, talk about that River Rock game tomorrow night. Uh, that game tomorrow night is the most excited I see people about the rock outside of pro wrestling and movies in <laughs> Northwest Ohio. Napoleon and Defiance, boy, they love that river rock, don't they? Yeah, they do. And one of the guys, the head coach in the point, Mr. Swery, he's got some PG uh, roots, doesn't he? Sure does. Former great player at Pandora Gilbo. He told me he's the greatest player ever to play at Pandora Gilbo. No, I'm just teasing Coach Swery. He's very proud of the fact that they broke a 10-game win streak for Columbus Grove when he played. This is a good uh, swing pass coming out as Pandora Gilboa has found their go-to man in Ethan Luganbill. Luganbill is going to have a Dale's Concrete first down as he's going to take the swing pass, get out to the 40-yard line. Yeah, Luganbill, every time he's had the ball in his hands, good things have happened. Comes up a little bit gingerly after that play, but another first down for Pandora Gilboa. And most of their good work has been outside the tackle box. Stay with that theme if you're the Rockets. Give him 17 on the catch and run. Getting late in the opening half here. Meyer in the shotgun as he has been most of the night. Drops back with a ball fake. It'll be hit as he throws, and that's going to be incomplete, applying the pressure for Columbus Grove. It was Kylan Mays, yeah. just a six foot, 230 pound. Sophomore. Yeah, he's the center also, but do you see the swim move that he used to get free? Beat the left guard like a rented mule. Got in the backfield. That was Mitchell Blank that he beat. Put a thumping on Mag. Our instant replay today brought to you by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. And correction, the quarterback Meyer hit Meyer. Second to 10, Meyer. With the fakes, going to roll out, trying to throw middle of the field. This one's going to be caught as a new target as Derek Mag, senior receiver, is going to be able to come up with that one. It's going to be another Dales Concrete first down as they get into Grove territory at the 47-yard line. Now, one thing is evident in this first half, Carson Meyer much more comfortable as a quarterback when he is on the move, especially throwing to his left. Hits the drag route for another first down there. Gain of 14. Sets up a first down in Grove Territory as we near the two-minute mark of our opening half. Empty backfield now for Meyer. Gets the snap, quickly fires. This one's going to get away from him, and it's going to be intercepted. Heard the coaches up here with us saying no, no, no the minute he threw the football. And playing out in center field, Mitchell Allerbrock comes up with a pick. They had to throw it early. The throw was affected because the inside backer blitz of Tag Cook came free, hit... Meyer, as he was throwing it, affected the throw. And now all of a sudden, Columbus Grove could maybe put another score in right before half and end this football game. Good return gets it inside Pandora Gilboa territory. Bulldogs will have it at the Rocket. We'll wait for him to spot it about the 48. Might move it up to the 47. Utah, Utah. We'll say 47. A little bit of pressure, stepping up, nice job. Stepping up is Brenner. And that one's going to be incomplete, as the officials say. That one's going to come out late. That's going to be A.J. Schaefer that looked as if he had it for a second, but the hit's going to knock it loose. And second time tonight, as Schaefer's helmet has come loose as well. We'll have to come off for a play, but you got to like the fact that Renner has been very composed in this football game, thrown from the pocket, taken off when he needs to. It was a good, accurate throw again by Renner. Four receivers set. Renner with the handoff. Not a whole lot to go there. It's going to be third down for the Bulldogs. Noah Burkholder, the defensive lineman, the senior, comes through, makes a play in the backfield. It's going to set up a third down and long. 
Last time they had third and long, they went with the tight end screen. See if Coach Schaefer circled that one up and comes with it back again. Bulldogs in no hurry. Under a minute and a half left to go here in our web insurance scoreboard. Trying to get everyone set. Having a tough time getting set. They were going to be empty. Yeah, I believe that is Zach Reynolds in the backfield. There's a pass. That one's going to be incomplete. Trying to hit Barraza. And Barraza wasn't quite sure where his route was off to. And the incomplete pass stops the clock here with a minute nine to go in the opening half. Yeah, it's kind of ill-fated from the start, right? Nobody knew how to line up. And then they made it worse, but not even running the right routes. And it looks like the punt team will come on near midfield. Maybe uh, a good punt kind of deters Pandora Gilboa does here in the final moment. Yeah, Pandora Gilboa really dodges a major bullet after that turnover. Setting up a punt now. Barraza back to punt this time. Only about 10 yards away. So it was going to roll out, and this was a read the entire time. Tried to get rid of it late, and it's going to be Rocket Football at the 45-yard line. Yeah, so it's a rugby read punt. If they got the edge seal, go ahead and take it, because Barraza, you got great feet. He reads it real late, then decides to punt it. And shades of Garo Yapremium in the Super Bowl for the Dolphins. That just kind of blew up, went nowhere. So with 1-0-1 to go in the half, see what Pandora Gilboa can do, starting at their own 46, down 27-9. Well, keep a note of that when Barraza's back as a punter. You got to be aware of the fact that he might be the fake punt guy. Meyer with the three receivers set. Quickly wants to get rid of the football. This one's going to go through the hands of his intended target in Aiden Morris. Good recognition by Meyer. He saw the top side blitz by the outside linebacker Schrader. So he threw hot quickly one-on-one -on -one against Schaefer. Had what he looked for. This to throw a little too high. Harris couldn't corral it. Second down coming up here for Pandora Gilboa. Empty set. Have verticals if they want it. Two high safeties. Meyer throws middle of the field. The officials say it's going to be incomplete trying to get back to Morris. Did a nice job coming back under the football, but the officials say did not get his hands underneath it. It's going to bring up third and ten. Oh, they got a good one on the defensive line. Kylan Mays came through again. He's got some serious quickness, number 52, playing this near side tackle. He's been living in the backfield of Pandora Gilboa late in the second half. Third and ten. Meyer looking to throw once again. Is going to float this one out. Big hit applied to Luganville as Tad Cook is going to introduce himself. Yeah, Mr. Mash in the middle of the field. You're going to try and catch it in front of me? Partner, he didn't even try to run him up. He was just going to wrap him up. He was just going to run him over. Form into the back. Hello. How are you doing on a Thursday night? Gain of about two. He's going to bring up a fourth and eight. And see what each team will do here in under 30 seconds to go. Columbus Grove right now in no hurry to stop the clock. It looks like they're more than happy to take this 27-9 lead into the locker room. Yeah, Ethan Luganville's probably happy. Coach, no more. Don't run another play where I get smoked in the back. It kind of looked like an old NFL Films footage of Dick Buckus back in the day, wasn't it? Patrol in the middle of the field. That was impressive. And the timeout is taken with about five seconds to go, so there will have to be one play run here on fourth down. Five seconds to go. Did you just kind of throw it up and just kind of see what happens? Well, you might as well, but you don't want to take a sack and cough it up, and all of a sudden they pick it up and run it in. Some teams like to punt it here or just tell the punter run around for a while and then take a knee, but you know, unless you've practiced it, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get a little too creative on the sideline. You're like, you have to remember, have we practiced this with these guys yet? And if the answer is no, do not play it. Correction, they did put three seconds on the clock, so eight seconds. Yeah, it definitely changes what you're going to do. Eight seconds can be an attorney. Well, looks like breaking the huddle with Morris. Kind of lined up as the punter. Yeah, they're going to punt this football, but if you're Columbus Grove, right, just come after it. 
Oh, yeah. Even if you're rough to punter, no big deal. Try to get this thing. But it looks like they're going to play safe here. Set up a return. Hulker back deep. It looks like they're going to send about nine. Do have one deep. Morris able to get rid of this one. Bit of a wobbler, but it's going to bounce. And looks like the Rockets are going to do the smart thing here. Make sure the clock hits zero before they down the football. So that is how our opening half of the 2022 football season will end at the break. Columbus Grove with a 27-9 lead will step aside. We'll return for the second half right after this on WOSN. Hawker's got this teed up. We're ready to go. Second half underway. End over end kick. A little short kick. This one will be fielded at about the 15. Good return. As able to dance his way around some would-be tacklers. Will be Aiden Morris, and Morris is going to get out near the 45-yard line. Now Morris is quick as a cat, isn't he? Nice little turn. Makes a little cut. Next, next thing you know, it's on the 45. Good return, good starting position. It was Barraza that knifed him to the ground or else he would still be running, celebrating in the end zone. Here, Pandora Gilboa. Great starting position to begin the second half. It's first and 10 for them at their own 45, just in the way the second half. Again, 27 to nine on our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Three receivers set, seen a lot of this the opening half out of the Rockets. Meyer going to roll out, looks to throw into coverage, but the ball is going to be caught. Nice job hanging on to that one. Actually, they're going to say, I think say that's incomplete. That one must have been jarred loose. Yeah, it was. It was Mitch Ellerbrock who came off his uh, coverage responsibility, came back to help because Schrader was beating on the out route, but he jarred it loose. A little collision right there. Tried to go back to Aiden Morris, who had a great return. Good throw, but better defensive play to knock it loose. Yeah, Ellibrock a little uh, gamey coming off the field. Was kind of limps his way to the side. Tried to shake it off, and I think the coaches saw it and kind of called for him. Did everything he could to stay out under the field, but he is going to come off here. Luganville with a run on second down. He'll get into Grove territory, able to fight off a couple of tacklers, and he's going to have himself a Dale's Concrete decorative stamping first down as he gets to the 40. Yeah, remember our beginning of the game, we said one of the things that they have to do is stretch the edge. That was successful because Andrew Miller, number 34, seals the edge for the Rockets, allows Luganville to get to the edge, and Luganville, boy, when he gets his shoulder squared up, he is a tough load to tackle. Run of 15... And it's a first down for Pandora Gilboa at the Columbus Grove 40. First downs today brought to you by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping. Call them in Lipsick for all of your commercial and residential concrete needs. Luke and Bill once again try the left side. Won't be as successful. He'll pick up a couple of yards, get near the 38. Zane Steschulte, number five, stays in at corner. Came in a couple snaps ago after Mitch Ellerbrook knocked that pass loose. They're still working on Ellerbrook on the sideline. Hopefully he gets back in the game soon. Second and eight from the 38. We've played a minute into our second half. Meyer with a fake under a little bit of pressure. Roll out pass. That one is going to be complete, it looks like. Nice job holding on to the football as... Is that Derek Mag, number 24, able to come up with that one? Yeah, Mag dives and gets it, and it's a good thing that he got it, or else that thing would have been intercepted because lurking right behind was the secondary. Number 13, Antonio Gray, would have picked it off, but it was a diving catch of Mag that converts another first down opportunity for Pandora Gilboa. Good yeah. opening drive. That's a Dale's concrete first down as Pandora Gilboa reaches the Grove 29-yard line. Man goes in motion. Meyer looks to throw, swings it out for Harris. Harris trying to get a little <laughs> running group, and he's going to be double teamed and brought down. And one of the big stoppers there, a name we've mentioned a couple of times, Tad Cook, comes up with a big hit, number 50, in the red and gray. Well, it's like a car crash on I-24 over there. Good Lord, what a hit. Coming up to help with Zane Steschulte also. My Lord, I was one of those hits, partner. I was worried that no one was going to get up, but... 
Some good old hard-hitting football right there. No gain on the play. It'll bring up a second and 10. As Pandora Gilbo has reached the Grove 29 in just five plays. Meyer looks to throw, swings this one out. That one caught. Nice job. Harris brings it back into his body. Ball's going to come loose at the end of the play. Officials will say that Pandora Gilbo is going to hang on to it. Yeah, Eaton Mora scrambles back to saves the save possession for Pandora Gil Borles. That would have been a huge break. This is a Columbus Grove defense that had a big takeaway early in this game on a turnover run back into the end zone by Schrader. They averaged 2.3 turnovers a game last year, 23 takeaways, so it's something that this defense has a tradition of doing. Brings up a third and one from the 20-yard line, trying to get inside the red zone. They'll just run for the first down. And they'll get it fighting forward as they go back to Luganville. And it is another Dales Concrete first down for the Rockets. It seems like every time Pandora Gilboa gets inside to 20, Columbus Grove answers by bringing in Connor Douglas, number 76. Get a little bit bigger on the inside. So get a gain of five to the 15. Luganville, big hole up the middle, able to bounce off one tackler, and he's in for the touchdown. Well, most of the great runs have been on the outside on the perimeter tonight. This is really the first time Pandora Gill Bowl just right, right at the face of that Bulldog defense. That was just nastiness. Iso on the inside linebacker. Great lead blocked by Andrew Miller, and then Luganville would not be denied Physical, physical run by the Rocket offensive line. Luganville in for the second time tonight. Is a 15-yard touchdown run. What a drive to begin the second half. Eight plays, 55 yards. Taking exactly three minutes off the clock. Now someone late coming onto the field for the special teams unit as the Rockets attempt the extra point. Low snap, that one a little slide. Oh, but it able to go through by Suter. Pandora Gilboa gets back into this one, her web insurance scoreboard. Now 27 to 16, we'll take a break here on WOSN. Tonight's incident replay is made possible by Halker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at halkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Pandora Gilbo is going to want an instant replay of that drive, partner. Mm -hmm. Eight plays, 55 yards. Ethan Luganville and a 15-yard touchdown run. He's got the Rockets back into this one, what? down 27 to 16. Matt Hershey, got to be excited to see these guys answer the bell coming out of halftime, making this a football game yet again. Squib kick, this one's gonna be fielded at the 40. And not uh, much further beyond that, but good field position for the Bulldogs of Columbus Grove as they touch the football for the first time in the second half. Yeah, there's a little bit of a hole on that sideline due to the alignment of Columbus Grove. They're trying to get a free ball over there and see if they can chase it down and recover it. But second time they've tried that and they've given up field position each time. Might wanna cross that one off the special teams list. Grove will start at their own 41. And we'll see two receivers coming towards the visitor's sideline. First down, they'll run it. Not a whole lot of running room there as the line for Pandora Gilboa beginning to uh, make a little noise here. Andrew Miller, number 34, comes in, makes the play along with Jake Fisher, number 79 for the Rockets. And remember early in this game when all the physicality was nothing but dominant by Columbus Grove? It's kind of changed here as of late, hasn't it? No gain on the run. It's going to bring up second and 10. Renner once again in a shotgun. Looks to throw. He's going to get rid of the football. Zach Reynolds with it. Reynolds uh, fighting for a Dales concrete first down. He's going to be out of bounds in Pandora Territories. I believe uh, Pandora Gilboa coaches wanted a penalty. It was a little bit of movement before the ball was in. This isn't the CFL where everyone gets a head start. <laughs> There's only 11 guys on the field also. A good block on the perimeter 
Shep Halker sealed it. Allowed Reynolds to get to the outside on the bubble screen. He wondered when they were going to take advantage of it because the safety is placed so far off that inside slot. It's free yards. You see it again to the top side. Safety is going to be 13 yards off of Halker inside. And speaking of 13, that was uh, the yardage of that last play. Handoff is Braza. Braza, a couple of touchdowns, trying to get into the open field. Late flag coming in after the tackle, or it might have been during the tackle and just late arriving. Flag had a long way to go, and we'll see what the hankies for. Yeah, Hulker's the one looking around at the official trying to plead his case. Might be on number 20 for Columbus Grove. Yeah, he's rolling his eyes, and he's he's doing everything he can. He's, he's his own attorney. They're going to say, sorry, son, you're guilty. So waiting for the call. Yeah, and we're set up on the visitor side, so the officials kind of have their backs turned to us. They try to see with penalty. I, I do know the universal sign for the hold. It's going to back that one up. It's going to be a spot foul, though, so they'll be okay. It was a good kick out blocked by Schaefer. They got Barraza free. So the ball does come back to the 44-yard line, so they'll net a couple yards on the play. It's your everyday first and nine. The official's going to talk it over some more. So they're going to get everyone from Columbus Grove away as the officials will have a caucus. Are they making sure they're right on the down? I like when they get together and talk and then don't say anything to anybody. They just walk away from each other. That's my favorite one right there. Inside slot uncovered again for Columbus Grove to here to the near side. Looks like they are set. Runner gets the snap. He's going to go to Braza once again. Braza will bully his way to about the 40-yard line. So we'll give him about four yards on the gain there. And it's going to bring up a second and manageable about four, maybe five. Well, it's not every day you look at your play chart and you say, what do I call on first and nine? They went inside. Inside run to Braza, and I'd argue anytime you give it to Braza is a pretty good idea. A couple of touchdown runs so far for him. On the inside handoff. And nowhere to go that time as once again, Pandora Gilboa defense shows up. It was a little slow to get up. Is that Schaefer? It is A.J. Schaefer. Yeah, he's holding the back of the left calf. That is a cramp issue. If you've never had a leg cramp, folks, the trainer will come out and tell you to relax and it's almost impossible because your leg is cramping you just need to get some fluids in you, you gotta point your toe away and trying to relax and co collect your breath let that cramp get out of there so we'll take a look at the injured player we'll take a break here on WOSN Well, Schaefer able to get up and kind of make his way to the sideline here. Big third down coming up for Columbus Grove. It's going to be third and four. And this one is going to be whistled dead. As very late whistle after a snap. Will they get a timeout or a false start? See what happened here with the officials. Yeah, we're going to get ourselves a false start. Yeah, I tried to get Barraza one on one against Andrew Miller, working in the middle of the field again. They're gonna say false start, third down and long now for the Bulldogs. You gotta wonder, are you in four down territory here if it gets close? Back to third and about nine, maybe eight. Nearing the halfway mark of this third quarter. Two receivers coming to the near side. And pressure coming. And that one's going to go through the hands of the intended target and Shep Hulker. Yeah, Hulker did the right thing. He settled up beyond the sticks. But you see he kind of peaked at the last second, took his eye off the ball. That's going to set up fourth down. It would have been an easy conversion had he just been able to settle down and catch it. Yeah, Renner, good job throwing it under duress. Had someone in his face, but had a good strike to his receiver, Hulker. Just a drop ball. Special teams unit coming on for Columbus Grove as we see 
Mitchell Ellerbrock back to punt. We saw um, Barraza once, kind of a special punt, a little fake, but yep. Ellerbrock now back out there. Barraza's now a gunner on the outside. A little movement, but looks like uh, no one saw that. Punt, bit of a short punt, takes a little bit of a grove bounce as it heads out of bounds near the 10 yard line. That is where Pandora Gilboa will get this one back. So the momentum once again back towards the side of the Rockets here. Well, that's a huge defensive series for Columbus Grove. Andy Cole's defensive coordinator. It's a proud group. A year ago, they only gave up eight points a game. Teams only ran the ball for 2.7 yards per carry. Took it away anytime they wanted. 23 takeaways a year ago. Now they're being challenged. However, are they going to rise to the challenge? They have the advantage with this Rocket offense backed up in their own end zone. Ball officially spotted at the 12-yard line. Handoff goes Luganbill getting to the corner. He's able to cut up field. Good run on first down. It's going to be another Dales Concrete first down on the run. Outside zone gets it done again for this Rocket offense. First down. Loudon Oshmody in at linebacker number 57 as A.J. Schaefer still on the sideline trying to get that cramp done. Lost a mag out of the game as well. Number eight on the sideline, trying to get some of the guys a little bit of a break for Columbus Grove. Gain of 15 on the run will bring up a first and 10 from the 27. This time they will go to Miller as Andrew Miller, the change of pace, and scored seven touchdowns as a freshman a year ago. He's able to get near the 30-yard line. Ethan Johnson, the 6'4", 305 junior, makes the tackle right there. It's a lot of beef inside for Columbus Grove with him and Connor Douglas, 305 and 320 on the inside. As we normally have here this early part of the year, cramps playing a factor in the second half. Temperatures got... Uh, a little bit warmer than expected uh, earlier in the week. You know, Miles and I were talking about what the weather was going to be like. We thought maybe mid-70s, and then turns out mid-80s beginning to cool off a little bit. A uh, uh, couple things, though. Your, your, your preseason is so short. You, mm -hmm. used to, you used to have like a whole month before you get to a game of two a days, and you know, your body would get acclimated, right? The guys don't have as much time to get their body acclimated to game shape. And you can tell kids all week long, hydrate, hydrate, eat bananas, hydrate. They're not hydrating like they should. They just don't. You know, you tell them not to drink pop, guess what they're drinking? They're drinking pop. They should drink some water. Too late if you're waiting the game day to hydrate. Way too late. You got to do it all week long. And that PSA brought to you by Miles Holiday. <laughs> yeah, I'm the only guy saying bring back longer two-a-days. Everybody else in the state's like, heck No. Yeah, even uh, even now, what is it, five days before you can have full uniforms? Yeah. It's a different world, Coach. <laughs> it sure is. Every guy that played before the year 2000's got stories of how tough it was. Second and eight coming up here for the Rockets. See a man going in motion. They'll get the quick pitch to him. That's a nice job kind of running out of a tackle with Aiden Morris. Morris able to get out across the 30-yard line. Yeah, you got to wonder if he looks back at this game, as Coach Hershey wants that one back. You've been running outside zone, getting 10 yards or more every time. Why get cute and run an outside zone stretch play with a jet motion? Remember, that's the same kind of concept they ran when they ran the double pass that got intercepted by Hulker. Hey, good to see Lawson Mag, number eight for Columbus Grove, back in, kind of lining up as a defensive end right now. Run goes for three. It's going to bring up a third and five. Under five minutes left to go third quarter. Low snap. Meyer able to get this one. Fires middle of the field. And a nice diving effort. And the ball is going to be caught by Aiden Morris. And a big Dale's concrete first down for the Rockets. I was wondering if Meyer might have underthrown it. Picking on the two high safety post look again. 
Two high safeties, they vacate, hit the post in between them. Great catch it going down and getting it. Aiden Morris, how many times has Aiden Morris come up with a big play in this game using his hands? Remember his drive ago where he saved that possession by falling on the, the football. That time comes up big on a post route. 22 yards on the pass play. It's a Dales Concrete first down. Rockets continue to drive back in Columbus Grove territory. Meyer looks to fire once again and going up and getting this one is Colin Harris. But sometimes you just have to trust your receiver to make a play, right? That was a 50-50 ball, and your big receiver goes up and get it. Six foot, goes up and defeats the safety, Mitch Ellerbrook. Ellerbrook kind of lost track of the ball. 20 yards on the reception, we talked about it. One of the strengths for this team, Pandora Gilboa. Some of the returning players on offense, especially at receiver, and they're starting to shine here as we get late into this third quarter. Meyer, give it to Luganville. Luganville trying to stretch this one out. This one looks like it's going to be coming back as a flag comes in by the referee. I think they're going to get Brayden Hagemeyer outside. Tried to reach and seal. Tried to run outside zone without a cover on the tackle. Tough for a tackle to reach all the way outside and get that seal without a little bit of extra help with a tight end or a slot on top. It's a big ask. That time got a little handsy. So the 10 yard walk off will back this up. It's from the spot and it's gonna come back to about the 34. Nope, they're gonna keep going. And they'll, they'll make it 35 yard line. Remember in the first half, they broke out the jailbreak, jailbreak screen and almost got to pop. Great play by Tad Cuck to break it up. See if Coach Hershey remembers that one. So that was one play away from being a big gainer. So first and 20 now back at the 35-yard line. Meyer in a shotgun and now more movement. And it looks like the Rockets might be getting five of the yards back. Yeah, good news for Columbus Grove, A.J. Schaefer back in the game. Bad news is, is a little too eager on that pre-snap. They draw him offside, get a free yards, free five yards for Pandora Gilboa. Like what we saw there out of Dylan Bryan, one of the uh, seniors, number 61 for Grove, the universal hand on your hand. Hey, think, think, think. Mm. Kind of telling some of his teammates. It's like in basketball where you go slap five with a guy shooting a free throw and misses. Never understand that. Why, why are you slapping five with you gotta, him? You got to dab him back up. So back to a first and we'll call it 15 or so from the 30. Meyer looking to throw. He's going to get rid of this one. It's going to be intercepted. Another interception this time. Tad Cook. Tad Cook does more than tackle. Comes up with a big interception. <laughs> That's a big time play, isn't it? He is an inside linebacker. Do you think he's just going to be an A and B gap player only? No, -uh, this big fella can rumble. He goes all the way out, gets outside the under route, gets a big pause on it and steals it away. Looks like we have it an injured player at the end of that, and I understand that might be Carson Meyer. And I think they're going to check him out for another cramping issue. So while they take a look at the injured player, we'll take a break. Big interception for Grove. They'll have the football when we come back. After the interception, Columbus Grove will have the football at their own 31-yard line. It's Tad Cook steps in front of the Carson Meyer pass, and we could see some old-school Columbus Grove football here late in this third quarter, handoff on first down will be for a minimal gain as they go to A.J. Schaefer's, kind of filled that role at fullback here. Under three minutes to go in the third quarter on our web insurance scoreboard, 27-16. Columbus Grove holding on to the lead. Now I'm still kind of stunned by the interception by Ted Cook. That was just an impressive play, wasn't it? The way he caught it, just kind of like a shark jumping out of the water, biting some kind of... Seagull you're, or something? You're waiting for that football to just get deflated, weren't you? Yeah, it was two big giant paws on it. It was a great play. Second down, uh, the option, 
They get it out to Barraza. Barraza trying to break to the outside, able to fight forward. Looks like he's going to have himself a Dales Concrete first down as he gets out across the 40 to the 41. Yeah, I love the concept. Speed option, open option coming your way. Quarterback, easy read. Someone comes to you, makes a little pitch. Mm -hmm. Let Barraza catch and get on the perimeter. I think that's a play you'll see more of moving forward for this Columbus Grove offense. They're going to move him back after originally spotting the football. So the uh, tails of the first down a little bit premature. It's going to be third and about one and a half, close to two as he's backed up to the 39. So my apologies to Dale's Concrete for giving away the first down already. Look at the condensed formation on the near side. And off goes back to Barraza, trying to get across the 40. And he was held up from behind. Good stop made there, I believe. That was Wyatt Russell, senior linebacker, comes up with a big stop. And it's going to be fourth and about one from the 40. Hey, I wonder if the design was to get outside because the near side blockers kind of turned their hips that way. And, buddy, hey, how about Coach Schaefer? Fourth down, we're not going to punt it. At least it appears they're going to go for it in their own end. Trying to salt this one away. Might have to star this one. They're going to run the option on fourth and one. Trying to stretch out his Barraza. And it looks like he will get that Dale's concrete first down. That's great play by Barraza. Not well blocked, but he just had to beat two guys. And every time he's hit, what's he do with the football? He stretches it out, gets some extra yards. Huge play by Mr. Barraza. Needed a yard, got two. And it's a first down for Grove, under a minute and a half to go, third quarter. Oh, I still can't believe Coach Schaefer rolls the dice and goes for it in his own end there. He doesn't get it. You're putting Pandora Gilboa in great position to score a touchdown. And Brenton Renner goes all the way to the sideline to get the play, comes back here. In a pistol, has a back behind him. He'll give it to him. Brazo once again fighting towards midfield. And he's going to be stopped there. So he'll pick up about eight as he continues to pile up the yards. Well, you see, anytime they need extra yards, they're going to go, go behind Ted Cook, number 50. And they're going to bring A.J. Schaefer around, number seven, to lead the way. That's a pretty good deal running behind those two and giving the ball to Barraza. That's a good choice. Second and two from the midfield stripe. Renner gets the snap, looks to that far sideline, has a man open, pass is caught to Zach Reynolds. Reynolds going to make one man miss, and he's going to have another Dales Concrete first down as he's able to fight inside the 30-yard line. Yeah, you wonder if Andrew Miller, number 34 for Pandora Gilboa, is not 100% because he went out there to try to make the tackle, and you see him down again. He's dealing with cramping issues again. So 21 yards on the pass play, and another player stopped because of the cramps here. So with the issue, we'll take a break as well, late in our third quarter. Good to see. Pandora Gilboa player is uh, Andrew Miller able to slowly make his way back all the way across the field. It'll be a uh, first down here following the 20-yard uh, play for Columbus Grove. They'll go back onto the ground. Trenton Barraza, Barraza will fight inside the 30, pick up a yard or two. Yeah, well played by Pandora Gilboa. The formation, they vacated the middle of the box. Really only five to six guys inside the box because of formation as they vacated the linebackers. So they try to come back inside. But good job by Pandora Gilboa taking away the inside run of Trenton Barraza. And that play will be the final one of the quarter, so we'll take a break here. Fourth quarter coming up next on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Rockets is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets. Second down coming up here for Columbus Grove as the Rockets trying to read the option as they go back on the ground. Columbus Grove does to Trenton Barraza. Barraza trying to bounce to the outside. Not a whole lot of running room there. It's going to bring up a third down. I see A.J. Schaefer, number seven, trying to get the edge. 
contained for that offense, but couldn't get it done. He is still laboring on that leg. You, you wonder if he's not near close to 100%, but just doing the best he can out there. Third and about seven, it looks like, near the 27-yard line. Ninth play of the drive coming up here for Grove, trying to salt this one away. Renner looks to throw, fires a pass. That's going to be caught. One of those players that's really stepped up, done a nice job here in the second half. Zach Reynolds able to haul that in right near the sticks at the 20-yard line. The officials are going to wait and see where they mark this one. Haven't sent the chain gang downfield yet. They're going to look at this one, look at this one. Looking in the wrong way because there's no chains towards the other side. It is marked inside the 20. It's going to be a Dales Concrete first down. Well, they're wondering who's going to step forward as a receiver. I think we have the, Ron the Reynolds kid as the answer, right? Easy concept. You're uncovered. Just run to the sticks and turn. Renner throws it on time. First down. Huge play for Columbus Grove to salt this game away. First down coming up here. Just inside the red zone, the 20-yard line. Yeah, Reynolds uncovered again on the inside slot. Braza trying to bounce to the outside. He's going to be met by a couple of defenders. Flag coming in as well, so we'll see what uh, all this is about. Yeah, usually it's an outside run with a flag. That's going to be a hold as they couldn't get the edge sealed. One well, of the few times Braza shows his youth, though, Instead of just tucking up under and getting as much as possible, kept trying to bounce and bounce and bounce. And the Rocket defenders kept stretching them out. Indeed, it's going to be against Columbus Grove. It looks like another hold. And that's going to back them up. And they'll spot this. Looks like at about the 22, 23 yard line downfield hold, so 10 yards from the spot. I'd like to see him put Reynolds out to a side by himself. Just let him run a vertical. See if Renner can throw it up, let the guy make a play. You get this close to the end zone, throw it in there at least once, right? So Renner looks to throw. He's going to set up a middle screen. It looks like one of the linemen kind of got in the way as they were looking to go towards Shep Hulker. Yeah, Hulker kind of cut in front of Tad Cook. He's supposed to come under. Cook makes the first block on the corner to establish the tunnel. Going to run the middle tunnel screen. It was there, just poorly executed. There's some tired fellows out there on this football field. So that's going to bring up a second down. Incomplete pass. Stops our clock. See, 10.28 left to go on our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Renner looks to throw once again, fires middle of the field. Back to Hawker. And that is going to get near the 10 yard line. It's a good time with Shep Hawker to tell you that our instant replays tonight are made possible by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. It looked like Hawker was going to try and leave the field cramping up a little bit also. They're going to go a little bit bigger on the offensive line for Columbus Grove. Third down and about two. No doubt about it, buddy. This is four down territory. Yeah, picked up 11 on the pass play, as Miles said. Big third down from the 12. Trying to put this one away. Big Ethan Johnson, 71, into the game at right tackle. Yeah, so we got Schaefer kind of lined up as a tight end. As Barraza trying to fight forward is going to get inside the 10 yard line. And it looks like that is going to be just enough for Dale's concrete first down. It'll be, it will be first and goals. They put the chains down. First and goal from the nine. <laughs> Look at all the guys with their hands on their hips trying to get some extra win inside those lungs. These guys have practiced, they've had scrimmages, but nothing like playing that first game. Much different intensity level. Officially now the longest drive for either team of the night. 13th play of the drive coming up here. Barraza trying to open up over the middle is gonna get close to the five before he's brought down. 
He's just got that innate ability. You never get a, like a, a real clean hit on Barraza Dia. Just turns his body enough, spins enough, moves it. Just get your hands on him, maybe get him to the ground, but you're never getting a real shoulder pad on his chest. Second and goal from the five. Columbus Grove enjoying this drive, which by the way is now about six and a half minutes long. Renner, they hand off once again, Barraza off left side. And no signal yet. He's going to be shy of the goal line. The helmet popped off. Looks like the center, Kylan Mays, going to have to come out for a snap. They're going to counter by bringing Ethan Johnson back into the football game. New personnel grouping. We'll call this third and goal from the one. Pan can Pandora Gilboa rise up and keep themselves in this game defensively? Runner still in at quarterback. He's going to go this time, but I believe that was Landon Schrader. And Schrader. I didn't see. Do they quickly give a signal and I missed it, Miles? Yeah, it's a touchdown. Schrader barely got over. Stingy Pandora defense, but it was just enough. So Landon Schrader will cap off the 15-play drive with a one-yard touchdown plunge. As Hawker will come on and attempt the extra point here. Now 33-16 on our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. High snap, but a put down. Kick is up, and the kick is good. It's Columbus Grove on a long drive adds on to their lead. Now 34-16, we'll take a break here in WOSF. Oh, most impressive drive of the night there by Columbus Grove. 15 plays, 69 yards, 7 minutes, 26 seconds off the clock. Landon Schrader with a one-yard touchdown run. And on our scoreboard brought to you tonight by Web Insurance Agency, Grove now 34-16 over Pandora Gilboa. That's kind of a tradition drive, wasn't it? All those plays, they know how to close out games. 22 straight regular season wins. Veteran senior group, they know what it takes to close out games, and that was predominantly done on the run. Alker with a squib kick there. Morris will get this one out across 30. Scoreboard tonight, brought to you by a web insurance agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in Lima and Bluffton. And now, a penalty flag on the return. This one draws the ire of some Pandora Gilboa coaches. Is it the old sideline warning? Yeah, I think I saw the signal of the white hat. So this one, I don't know. They've got the officials have the ball back right now where the flag is. So now they are walking we're it gonna off. We're going to walk this one off. I believe that might have been a little more than the sideline warning. Yeah, usually the sideline warning, the first one is just a warning and no, there's no uh, yardage penalty, but. That's got to be an illegal block if they're marking off 10 yards there. So that's going to push them back to, looks like about the 13-yard line here. So big touchdown. Makes it a three-possession game. Clock might start to be a bit of a factor here. Luganville's going to run on first down as we approach near the halfway mark of this final period. Yeah, time of the game where... Columbus Grove would be more than happy to exchange six-yard runs for time off the clock. Time of the essence now. It's got to be important as uh, Meyer goes back in at quarterback after the direct snack to Luganville. This Pandora Gilboa offense got to go in a hurry now. Run of four on first down. It's going to bring second and six from the 17. Talked a couple of times. All the football coming your way. This is actually one of two Thursday games that our WOSN crews were at. Also the big battle in Lima. Here's a pass to the sideline. That one's going to be thrown out of bounds, trying to hit Colin Harris. It's one of those where either your receiver goes and gets it or that one ends up in the stands. As Zane Stechelty, perfect coverage. 
turn your hips so you can see the ball and then wall off to the receiver. Use the sideline as your buddy. Boy, that's been fantastic work. Andy Coles, defensive coordinator for Columbus Grove. He's going to give them an attaboy when they watch film tomorrow. It's third down coming up here. So also our crews with, uh, was it Lima Shawnee and uh, Shawnee and LCC? Fake the handoff. This job of the slant, hitting Harris. Harris out across the 25 to about the 26, 27 yard line. A nice fake by Meyer. Fake the inside run, get the linebackers to vacate, and then hit over behind them on the slant. Says Schulte there, but just a little bit too late. And a gain of 10 is a Dales Concrete first down. First downs tonight have been brought to you by Dales Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick. See them for all of your commercial and residential concrete needs. We'll go back to Luganville. Luganville still chugging along. He's going to switch hands, puts the ball in the right hand as he's out across the uh, 35 as the cramping issues. Still coming up here for Columbus Grove. Latest one looks like A.J. Schaefer. Schaefer needed some help from Mag to get up. This ball is going to be spotted. Looks like right at the margin. Now they're going to bring the uh, down box back a bit. Might be about a half yard shy as this one is spotted at about the 36-yard line. Yeah, you see Schaefer walking off the field. He, he's walking like a 49-year-old man. I know because that's exactly how I walk. Get some fluids in him, see him back on the field soon. But once you have cramps, you're going to fight it all game long. It will test your toughness. You just know when you sit on the couch for too long, right? <laughs> I sit anywhere too long. Second and one before that. It looks like a timeout. So the stoppage of action will step aside as well as Pandora Gilboa tries to stay in this one. Second down coming up here for Pandora Gilboa, just shy of first down. Meyer looking to throw, is going to fire this one, and that one's going to end up over the head of his intended target and into the Columbus Grove bench. We see them getting a little deeper into their bench for uh, Pandora Gilboa. It's Tanner Lichty, junior receiver, the intended target there. As trying to run a five-yard hitch, hit him on the turn, knowing that Columbus Grove is cognizant of the fact that they want to keep everything in front of them. I'll let you catch it for five yards, come up and tackle. They just don't want any big shots getting over top of their head. Third and one, and a little problem on the handoff as that one didn't go right into the breadbasket of Luganville. And this one's going to be uh, coming up on the spot here to see uh, how close this is to a first down. See the official work in the sideline for Pandora Gilboa kind of looking in, trying to eyeball it. As the officials doing everything they can to not have to bring the sticks out. And they're going to have to do just that. If it was the near side official to our sideline that was spotting the football, he was going to give them the first down, but it was the middle official they actually set the ball down, so now they're going to have to come out and measure. I'm going to say that he got the first down. It was a really good play inside by Kyle Lathrop, but couldn't get his shoulder pad underneath Luganville. Had to make an arm tackle, and Luganville kind of ran through the arms. So the chain gang uh, works their way out to the field. So uh, while they take care of that, we can tell you that we're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV slash John Reed. Well, as I was saying, they come up short. Luganville doesn't get a great play by Lathrop, but no doubt about it, right? You got to go on fourth down with 5:01 left in this game. Fourth and inches for Colum or I'm sorry, for Pandora Gilboa, their own side of the field at the 36-yard line. So straight ahead, and they will get the first down that time. Out across the 40 to the 41, so a gain of five. And time again becoming a bit of a factor here. Under five to play on our web insurance scoreboard. Now if they're going to continue to use that power formation with Luganville at quarterback, 
Eventually, they're going to have to do something with Meyer outside at receiver, throw it to him, or else teams will wise up, right, and just load the box knowing it's going to be inside run. Meyer looking to throw. He's got a man open, and he's able to hit him. Took him just a minute to find the open receiver at Colin Harris. Harris out across the 45. Looks like they'll mark him at about the 47. Yeah, he's trying to hit Aiden Morris on the seven route, but is well covered. Remember, Columbus Grove's going to let you catch everything in front. Second and four as the Rockets hurry a little bit. Meyer again works middle of the field. This one's going to be caught as they get into Columbus Grove territory. It will be a Dales Concrete and decorative stamping first down as this one is hauled in at the Grove 44. So gain of nine. Now with exactly four minutes and counting to go. And if you're Pandora Gilboy, you got a little give more giddy up in you, don't you? Huddling right here is doing nothing but eating time. Not to mention the time you're wasting by getting guys lined up. Let's see a man coming in motion. That is Morris. Morris is going to come up with a catch, and he's going to be taken out of bounds. Oh, they're going to say that... Uh, his progress was stopped, so the clock will continue to run. A nice job by the sideline official. Recognize that Reynolds came up, made contact inbound. So therefore, the clock should keep running. Actually, it's Steschulte. Zane Steschulte came up, made the tackle. So gain of two brings up second and eight. Meyer, quick throw this time, back to the sideline, through the hands of Harrison, incomplete. Hit him in the worst spot he can. He had ideas of what he's going to do after he got the ball in his hands. He was going to run. Forgot about the first part. Sometimes when you're down big points, you want to make plays. There's no such thing as a touchdown worth more than six points, though. you got to remember that. So third and eight coming up here, 259 left to go on our web insurance scoreboard. The Rockets not only need a score here, but then you'd either need an onside kick or a stop. You'll have to get another one. A long throw. That one's going to be over the head of Harris and incomplete. And now, kind of a do-or-die fourth down coming up here. Well, we need a big yardage. They've gone to the post play on conversions. See if they come back to that inside post. If I'm Shep Hulker lurking in the middle of the field or Trenton Barraza, I'm a cognizant of the fact that they've been beaten on the post a couple times. Maybe jump it, steal the game with an interception. Fourth of the ball game coming up here for the Rockets from the Columbus Grove 42-yard line. Meyer's going to send everyone out, gets the snap, looks to throw, has a man open. Now, do they get enough for the first down as the pass is caught by Harris? And it looks like, at least from our vantage point partner, he's going to be a little short. Doesn't look like the teams are switching personnel, though. I think they are going to give him the first down. Yeah. Official kind of walking over, and that's right at the stick. That looked like he was going to be a little shy. Yeah, credit Colin Harris, though, knew, knowing how far he had to go, settled up, and then having the wherewithal to hold on to the ball as he took a big hit by Steschulte. So gain of uh, just enough. Here's a fire on the run. Nice pass to Morris, who's going to take a big lick. And Josh Gannon, number 44, the sophomore in it, linebacker now, taking over for Tag Cook. Haul that one in for 15 yards to we'll back that up about 12 to the 22, it looks like. Clock momentarily stops on the first down. Meyer looking to throw again, but we'll have whistles and flags. It looks like five yards coming off here as the Rockets kind of got a jump start. Yeah, I don't think Tanner Leasty up at the top spot receiver, the ex receiver, I don't think he was set. You know, they say that's on the receiver. Now it's actually on your quarterback because all quarterbacks, you have to survey the field. One, to make sure you're set. Two, to see what coverage is. Then you go ahead and snap it. So back up the Rockets to the 27-yard uh, line here. First and 15. Just over two minutes to go. Meyer under pressure is going to take off and run. 
Haven't seen him do this a whole lot, and he's going to go down inside the 20 at about the 18-yard line. So positive gain there. Second down coming up here. It looks like second and about six or seven. And come away impressed, though, with Pandora Gilboa. Not going to win tonight, but I think they might have enough this year to challenge you know, Liberty Benton and McComb in that BVC. Yeah, Myers Miles. going to do nothing but get better all season long. Pass towards the corner. That was going to be caught. As Colin Harris, a nice job there, trying to roll his way into the end zone. But he's going to be down once he gets contact with the ground, and it's going to be a first and goal. Another Dales Concrete first down at the two-yard line. And of course, Liberty Benton, we'll get a chance to see them next week as we'll have Columbus Grove at Liberty Benton. It'll be next Friday night live on WOSN 645. Meyer on the quarterback keeper is going to be pushed back. And Connor Douglas makes the play inside. You see why they like to get big inside. The big fellas, Douglas and Johnson, getting it done for this Bulldog defense. 18th play of the drive coming up here for Pandora Gilbo, one that started back at their own 13 yard line. Under a minute to go in this one. Meyer with a handoff, trying to get to the outside. Luganville trying to stretch forward, and he's going to get the touchdown. On the 18th play of the drive, Ethan Luganville in for the third time tonight for the Rockets. But it looks like Pandora Gilboa, Miles, going to come up just a little short. Yeah, you got to respect Ethan Luganville, though, right? Well, how about the effort he has exhibited all night long the senior, knowing that the game is out of reach, but doesn't matter. He is a competitor all the way to the end. Reaches just enough to get it across for a touchdown. So 34-22. As the extra point on its way, the kick is up. And the extra point by Suter is good. So 34-23, we'll take one quick time out here and come back and wrap this one up right after this on WOSN. Well, Ethan Luganville, third touchdown, bright spot for Pandora Gilboa. Unfortunately, his team on the short end here, 34-23 on our web insurance scoreboard. The Rockets still have to kick off here. 35 seconds left to go, Miles. Well, the onside kick, go ahead and put a shot out. Looks like it's teed up for it. Ends up being a bit of a squibbler and it goes out of bounds. So Columbus Grove will have it here with 35 seconds to go. Partner, I believe they're just gonna salt this one away as Grove will win its 23rd straight regular season game. And more importantly to some, Third in a row in this Putnam County rivalry with the Rockets Pandora Gilboa. Well, every coach's favorite formation could be coming up for Columbus Grove. You see Renner just pointing to the official, put his hand on his knee, said, Yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a knee. Victory formation for the Bulldogs. Snap it one time, and you're going to come away with a big smile and a victory. So a hot start for Columbus Grove, and then able to uh, hold off the Rockets of Pandora Gilboa. As we'll have to see at least one snap here now. Looks like Columbus Grove making sure they get 11 on the field. There is the one snap, and it looks like that will be enough. As it looks like the handshakes on the field will be gone. They'll just have to let the clock run off here. So about 20 seconds to go. Everyone lining up and a good way to kick off the season as Columbus Grove is going to come away with a win, 34-23. to 23. I want to thank all of our sponsors making our game possible tonight, including the Web Insurance Agency, Hawker Drywall and Plastering, Dales Concrete and Decorative Stamping, and, of course, the premier sponsor for Pandora Gilboa, Sprunger Insurance, locations of Pandora and Bluffton. And they say, 
go Rockets. Uh, unfortunately, don't get the win tonight. 34-23, Grove gets the win. Miles, anything to uh, come away with after this one tonight? Hey, you got to go back to that 18-play drive that really sealed this game. That was a tradition laid drive. Timely third down conversions out of the throw game by Renner. Great running, great offensive line play to get the win. Enough for Coach Schaefer to be mad about on film to correct the next week. Big one against Liberty Benton. And if you're Pandora, Gilboa, Matt Hershey, thing you got to take away from this, boy, your kids really showed a lot of character, a lot of heart. They could have given up several times. You have a first-time starter at quarterback. He's going to get better. And you got two electric receivers outside that do a good job. And Luganville, how tough was he tonight? Enough for good things happen tonight for Pandora Gilboa moving forward. So 34-23, our final Columbus Grove gets the win over Pandora Gilboa. So Grove 1-0 to begin the year, while uh, PG will fall to 0 -1. want to thank our entire WOSN crew for making this possible tonight. Our Miles and I are first official night, I guess, out as members of uh, WOSN. A camera crew uh, did a, a great job tonight. Yeah, we got the gear and everything, says WOSN. So 34-23, our final Grove gets the win for my partner, Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.